In the previous lectures, we have been studying about Turing machines and we have also seen some examples of Turing machines. So in this lecture, we'll be studying about Turing machine programming techniques. So what this means is that we will see how we can program our Turing machines or how we can modify our Turing machines as per our needs. So let's see how we can do this. So for example, let's say that we have a problem like this. Our problem is how can we recognize the left end of the tape of a Turing machine? So we have seen many examples of Turing machines in the previous lectures and we know that the Turing machine always has a tape which is an infinite set of symbols and then in most of the cases we want to know when we are at the leftmost end of the tape of the Turing machine. So in the examples that we have seen also we have seen that when we reach the leftmost end of the Turing machine it means something or it helps us to understand something or it helps us to take some particular action. So sometimes when we reach the left end of the Turing machine we say that the program or the execution comes to an end or sometimes when we reach the left end we are required to move one step to the right or something like that. But the question is how can we know that we actually reach the leftmost end of the tape of a Turing machine. So we always say that we have reached the left end of the tape but how does the Turing machine know that this particular cell is the leftmost end of the tape. So there is no inbuilt technique or there is no inbuilt method in a Turing machine that helps it to understand that it is at the leftmost end. So what we want to do is we want to find a solution to this problem and we want to program our Turing machine in such a way that when it is at the leftmost end it will know that it is actually at the leftmost end. So let us see what is the solution that we can have for this problem. So here is a solution that we can have. The solution says that put a special symbol like a dollar symbol on the left end of the tape and shift the input over one cell to the right. So this is a solution that we can have. What we can do is that on the leftmost end of the tape we will put this dollar symbol and then the rest of the symbols which are there we will shift them one step to the right. So it will look something like this. So here we put the dollar symbol on the leftmost end and then the rest of the symbols we just move them one step to the right. So even in our pushdown automatas when we had the stack we used to put a symbol on the bottommost cell of the stack in order to denote that that is the bottommost element or in order to denote that when you reach that element you know that you have reached the bottommost element of the stack. So in the same way if you put this dollar symbol on the leftmost end then we can know that whenever you encounter this dollar symbol you have reached the leftmost end of the Turing machine's tape. So this is one solution that we can have. Now the question is how can you design or how can you program your Turing machine in such a way that it will perform this task. So suppose let's say that we have a Turing machine which is going to perform a particular task or which is there to decide a particular language and then it has a tape like this with some symbols in it. And now we want to put this dollar symbol at the leftmost end and then move every other elements one step to the right of the tape. So how can we have a Turing machine which will perform this particular task of putting the dollar symbol at the leftmost end and moving the rest of the symbols one step to the right. So let's see how we can design or program our Turing machine in order to do this particular task. So here I have designed the Turing machine which will perform this particular task of putting the dollar symbol at the leftmost end and moving the rest of the symbols one step to the right. Now let's see how this Turing machine works. So here we have four states A, B, C and D and this is the state that follows. So what is this? I will explain it to you as we proceed. So first of all let's see here we have the starting state A and in the starting state A we see that if you see the input symbol A on the tape then you replace that A with the dollar symbol and you move one step to the right. So just like this here if you see an A you replace this A with the dollar symbol over here and you move one step to the right. Alright and we see that 
if you get a B or small b, if you see a small b in the tape, then also you replace that b with a dollar symbol and you move one step to the right. Now why we are doing this is because we are not designing this Turing machine in order to work only for this particular input symbol. So here we have this input symbol A A A B B A. So we are not designing this only for this, but we are designing this Turing machine which will work for any kind of input symbols that we have over the alphabets A B. So even if you get B in the beginning of the tape, then you replace that B with a dollar symbol and you move one step to the right. All right, now let's come here. Now we reach the state B. If you were reading an A in the beginning. And in this state B, if you see an A again, then you replace that A with A itself and you move to the right. Like for example, here we are seeing an A. So you replace this A with A itself. So here it is an A. And then you move one step to the right. So we are over here. And you keep on doing this as long as you are seeing A's. So here also I am seeing an A. So I replace this A with an A itself and I keep moving to the right. And now over here, what happens is that we are seeing a B. So if you see a B, what happens is that it will go to state C. And it says that if you see a B, replace that B with A and move one step to the right. So even this B, I replace it with an A. And then I will move one step to the right. Now why we are doing this is because we remember that we are shifting the elements one step to the right. So even if you see a B here, you know that in the original tape that we had, the previous element or the element over here, it is an A. So that is why this B is replaced by A and we move one step to the right. Alright. And in this C, what happens is that if you see B, then replace B with B itself and move one step to the right and keep doing this for all the Bs that you see. So we were over here and here we are having a B. So replace that B with B itself. So here it is a B and move one step to the right. So I am here right now and here we are getting an A. So if you get an A in state C, what happens? Replace that A with B and move one step to the right and go to state B. So here I am having an A. So I replace this A with a B and then I move one step to the right. Now why we are doing this? This is also the same like the previous condition that I explained. Even though you are seeing a A over here, since you are shifting this whole thing one step to the right, even if you see an A here, so what you should write here is the previous thing that you had over here. So you had a B, so you wrote this B and you move one step to the right. Now here you see that we are in state B right now and what we are getting is a blank symbol. So in state B, if you get a blank symbol, what happens? Replace that blank symbol with an A and move one step to the left. So I replace this blank symbol with an A. So this blank symbol is replaced with A and I move one step to the left. So from here, I will move over here. All right. And then we come to state D. And in state D, it says whether you encounter A or B, replace the A with A itself and replace the B with B itself and keep moving to the left. So here whether you see A or B, it doesn't matter. Keep replacing A's with A itself and B's with B itself. So it basically means that you are not overwriting anything. So you just keep moving to the left. We keep moving to the left until you encounter a dollar symbol. So I keep moving to the left like this and I encounter the dollar symbol over here. So when I encounter dollar symbol over here, what happens? Replace the dollar with dollar itself and move one step to the right. So I am writing dollar here again and I move one step to the right and my tape head is over here right now. And now I am ready for the rest of the calculation or rest of the operation for which this Turing machine was actually designed. So we see that this Turing machine, this part of the Turing machine that we designed, what it is doing is it is writing this dollar symbol to the left end and it is moving all the other input symbols one step to the right and at the end when we reach over here the tape head is positioned exactly over the leftmost input symbol 
that we have and it is ready for the rest of the computations that it is supposed to do. So this symbol over here it represents the rest of the computation that the tutoring machine is supposed to do. So we may be designing this tutoring machine to perform some different kind of computations. So whatever you want to do you can continue over here. So this initial part it helps you to just put the dollar symbol at the leftmost end and move the rest of the inputs one step to the right. So now we know that whenever you reach this dollar symbol we can say that we have reached the leftmost end of the Turing machine. So whatever computation you want you can do over here and then whenever you want to know whether you have reached the leftmost end you can just see whether you are encountering a dollar symbol and if you are encountering a dollar symbol then we know that we have reached the leftmost end of the tape of the Turing machine. So this is how you can program your Turing machine in order to let it recognize that it has reached the leftmost end of the tape of the Turing machine. So this is one of the programming techniques and in the next lecture we will be seeing more programming techniques and examples of how we can design different Turing machines using those programming techniques. So I hope this was clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.